All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here today. Thank you, everyone, for attending the webinar. Thank you, the people from 8th X Street, for inviting, for inviting me. Thank you, everyone. So let me introduce myself. I've been an independent trader for the past 11 years. I am a discretionary market profile trader using both order flow and order book reading. You can ask me any questions, both in the middle or at the end of the webinar. So you can also email me about anything you need or reach me anytime at my Twitter account. I use Twitter openly and share my screen for one hour a day during my trading session. So you will be able to see my strategies working in real time. I do this for free because sharing knowledge with other traders has allowed me to learn a lot. Let's see today's summary. Today's core presentation will be on high frequency trading and high probability patterns that I have noticed when reading the order book. I'm going to show you today my best setup entries when reading the order book. I'm sure there are other strategies that also work well, but these are the ones that at least work best for me. And what's most important, they fit my personality. In fact, uh, today we don't need to reinvent the wheel. I will just focus on one on what has the CME recently forbidden. That's it, the 575 rule, which in my opinion is against the high frequency trading machines. So uh, that's exactly what we will be looking for. The CME that has recently forbidden the flash orders, but uh, from the other hand, those flash orders I can see that they keep on emerging every day. So uh, that will be my trigger entries. Before doing that, uh, we'll be talking before about uh, some of the most important high HFT strategies and how do they perform their job. What we'll, we'll be doing today is to 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 talk about uh, the order flow regarding the HFT. But what's most important, we will be try to profit from the HFT strategies. Of course, we cannot compete with the speed, but they will left a footprint that will be our trigger entry and that we uh, will try to to follow them. Let's talk before about the HFT. There are some false myths that I would like to point out. Some of one of them is that the high frequency machine are trading big, huge amount of big orders. And in my opinion, that is not true. If we take the total amount of uh, uh, quantity they trade, and we also take the number of trades that they do every day, we will be, uh, we, we can check easily that uh, in fact, they do a lot of trades, but not so huge, not so big to move the market. This is one of the false myths the HFT machines don't place big orders in the market in order to make a big move on it. Instead, they place a lot of big or of small orders. B, another false uh, myth about HFT is uh, the concept about algorithmic trading. Of course, all HFT trading is an algorithmic trading, but not, al not all algorithmic trading is HFT. For instance, in my opinion, most of the uh, big boys trading or the institutional trading is algorithmic. They use 
uh, uh, some computer algorithms to trade, but it's not HFT. So not all algorithmic trading is HFT. Finally, uh, in on C, uh, we can say that uh, the the HFT success ratio is not uh, a ninety nine percent. As far as I know, its success ratio is between the 55 and the 60 percent. The HFT strategies will keep on doing what they are doing until the strategy fail. Once it fail, then they will stop and look for a new opportunity. So the success ratio is not as big as we can think. But let's see first. How do they how do they work? Let's imagine that uh, we have a customer of a brokerage firm that wants to buy uh, some shares from the IB, IBM. Let's say that, uh, uh, for instance, that bank or that institution wants to buy 100 shares of IBM. This customer will place the order to his broker. And this broker will apply the law. The law says that he has to buy at the best bid for buying or has to sell at the best ask for selling. So he will place the first order to the first market. Let's say uh, he plays uh, to the New York Stock Exchange. And there uh, we'll take all the offer. So let's imagine there he can get only uh, 1,000 shares. All right, at this point, HFT machines, what they will do is to get information that a big customer is willing to buy a big quantity of IBM shares. So before the, the broker will send the orders to the other, to the other markets, what the HFT machine will do is to buy all the available paper on in the all the markets. So we'll make a frontline strategy. In the queue, we'll put himself before that customer. And that will increase the share, let's imagine, one or two ticks. So this customer will pay some a little bit more money for the same uh, for the same uh, share. That's how the HFT strategies will work. At this moment, uh, the HFT to do that, uh, what they will do is to put their computers inside the market. So uh, CME is offering right now what they call call location. So you can put your computer, your HFT computer inside the market and beside the CME computer. So you will be able to do all this strategy faster than anyone. So many strategies from the uh, HFT, what they will do is to make a, a frontline strategy when they will detect that you uh, will place a big order and want to buy uh, a big uh, amount of uh, shares, they will place their positions before, before you in the queue. So you will be forced to pay a, a little bit more. Other strategies that uh, the HFT are doing right now is arbitrage. For instance, they can check that the IBM share is uh, one cent expensive in one market than another. 
so they they will buy in one market and sell in the other and they can do that because of the because of the speed other strategy is they will act as market makers so they will provide liquidity to the market if they detect some someone that want to buy uh, a, a share from IBM and another that want to buy want to buy so they will provide liquidity in both sizes so in this sense HFT strategy will act as a market itself finally uh, I would like uh, to 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 give some of the new um, uh, some of the new strategies that are growing right now these are talking about the dark pool let's imagine that you are a broker and then you make an agreement with an HFT firm and then you ask the brother the broker to create a market let's say this market let's call it a dark pool so in case you want to buy the 100,000 shares from IBM you will contact your broker your broker but in this case oh, what the broker will do is to place the order to the dark pool to its market and due to the agreement that the broker has to the HFT uh, firm uh, then the broker uh, uh, will provide information about the HFT so in this uh, case uh, normally you pay commissions to the market so the broker should pay a commission to the market but in this case is the HFT that will pay money and will pay the commission to the broker just to have information in that pool before any anyone about the customer that want to buy those uh, 100,000 share as soon as the HFT get information on this dark pool then will place the frontline orders to the other markets just to to show some pictures this is the CME in Chicago Center and this is the new CME this is the building the new building in the CME which is in Aurora uh, that's something I cannot understand the Chicago Board of Trade has 12,000 square meters and the new building has 100,000 square meters the only reason because we all know that computers are getting smaller and smaller every day the only reason is to allow the co-location so in this big uh, space uh, they will allow all the HFT firms to put the computers beside beside its own computer so get the information before anyone but anyway the, we cannot change life but let's see how can we profit about uh, how can we profit about all these practices and how can we profit and get some successful patterns about uh, this uh, the way that the HFT act of course we cannot compete with more speed against the HFT but we can perform a piggyback strategy looking 
at their flash orders working. Our task will be to answer for what reason a flash order was placed and which was its purpose. Just answering this question, we would know what's going on in the HFT mind. So this will let us develop a successful setup. The picture we can see is from Nantex, a streaming data feed. We will use another software called Bookmap. Some of the version of this software is free. Other, you have to pay. But with this software, which is similar to the one we can see in the Nantex data feed, we, we will be able to see the flash orders, the big orders coming from the HFT. In our software, a big order will be displayed with a bright white, and a small order will be plotted with a light gray. Let's, let's, let's start. All right, this is uh, the software I mentioned before. In this case, in bright white, we can see a big order that was placed. This is also the same case. We can see flash orders emerging immediately in the screen. In the opposite case, we can also see a uh, light gray for small orders. So let's see how those machines are flashing the market in order to move the price as their one. Uh, we will be using this uh, software in order to anticipate the next move, in order uh, to predict the market. If I told you that I can predict the market when reading the book, you will think that I'm an idiot. Beware of someone that claims to do that. No one can predict the market. The market can do anything at any time. But instead, when talking about probabilities, I really think that we can benefit from the nature of special situations in the order book where we have the odds in our favor. And what's even more important, not only in real time when things are happening, but even long before these things could happen. Let's explain that by looking at a very simple chart, at a very simple example in the, with a small, uh, a small movie. Let's look at a very simple example on the DAX. After a small range, the DAX seems to spike with big volatility. But just after that, a huge selling order. Let's see if the movie can start. Let's see. All right, let's see. Exactly what we are looking to see we are willing to, to, to look for huge, uh, big orders that will emerge from nowhere in order to push the price. Let's see. We can see in this example, for instance, as the price moved down to an area where there was big buy limit orders. Those orders were crossed, as we can see in the dot. And just after that, some flash orders appear in the book. Those small uh, white dots have the intention to move the price up. Those flash orders are called by the uh, 575 rule backfilling and are forbidden. But 
I can see them uh, appearing day after day. We can see here more examples about the same. In this case, we have an opposite uh, strategy. So we can see the price moving down in a pullback. And just when the price have moved down, some limit orders are filled. And the market remains in a range. But immediately, some flash orders like here or here are pushing the price down. The only reason for these orders is to fill their own, their own buy limit orders. So with these orders, they allow their own orders to be filled. This is called from the CME spoofing, and it's also a, a practice that has been recently forbidden. But we can see they that they keep on emerging. This is my trade. So as soon as I see a spoofing, and as soon as I see that the price doesn't react to that big order, that this big order should move the price down, but instead of pushing the price down, they fill the order, I place my buy limit order. So just after that, the price move up. Here we can see again the same. It's always the same. So in an uptrend, the market is doing a pullback. As soon as the price comes to a trading range, some spoofing orders begin to appear and move the price. Again, the only reason for these orders to be placed is to fill their own paper. And as soon all this is done, the price will release and then get to our target again. Let's see. Let's see an example. In this case, I want to see the price trying to reverse the trend, breaking down through a level and collapsing with big red dots. This move make many traders jump on board, thinking that they are losing an opportunity. Suddenly, institutions absorb all this paper, but I still won't trigger my entry until I see the algos pushing the price up. I'm in, so I'm long now, and I have some back feeling. Again, some back feeling. So I keep in in my trade. The big, I will place uh, a, a closing order where I can see liquidity. So let's see what happens. Again, finally, and that's it. We are flat now.
All right, let's see some more examples about the same strategy. In this case, uh, let's see another example about the ES. Uh, we will see how a breakout of a resistance is made and how the algos are pushing through it. This trading idea is not mine. It's from a Twitter that was made by the trader FT911, a profile Chicago trader. It's very important to notice when the order flow puts the odds in our favor in order to provide better chances for the breakout. In my opinion, the purpose of those flash orders is to let the above selling orders to be filled. This above area of supply will act as a magnet for the price, while the flash orders will, cop, will keep on emerging until institutions have load all they need to load. When this task is done, then the flash orders will release the price and let it all and let it fall free down or move up. Right now, the window has opened. And again, backfilling, a forbidden practice. You will agree with me that those shapes are not uh, made from the demand and supply of traders. It's not a random, uh, uh, a random action. Those orders are the action of the HFT machines. All right, this is the breakout of the of the ES. Let's move ahead. Uh, now, uh, I also would like to use uh, these uh, strategies not only to enter in a trade, but also to manage a trade that I am in. Sometimes when I am inside a trade, I'm not sure if I am need to close or I should stay in. So we can use also the flash orders to take decisions. Let's see. So let's see in this case, again, the same. They place some large orders above and some special shapes, some pillars that will push the price up. Again, the flash orders, the flash orders emerging and the window that has opened. All right. Uh, uh, finally, uh, let's talk about the future. In fact, recently, uh, an investment of 300, uh, 300 uh, thousand millions has been made just to reduce the speed between a line between Chicago and New York, just to reduce two milliseconds from 17 milliseconds until 15 milliseconds, just two milliseconds. In fact, this is a mature market that needs uh, uh, big, uh, a big amount of investment. And probably uh, this is not available for everyone. So in my opinion, the profit of these firms will be reduced on the future. And not only because of the investments, but also because of the social, pre social pressure and market regulation like the 570, uh, 500, uh, 575 uh, rule from the CME. Recently, a punishment of $2.8 million has been placed to a, uh, an HFT firm. But let's see the future, how, how, it, 
what happens. So we have reached to the end and we have uh, 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 10 minutes in case uh, anyone would like to place a question. We can see the, the, the book of the, of the ducks uh, uh, in real time. So let's see, in the meantime, we answer the questions. We can see some interesting in the, in the book. All right, this question is made and talk about the Nantex. The Nantex chart uh, uh, is Nantex is in fact a data feed provider. Uh, Nantex is a very expensive and uh, about very reliable. I don't really think that it's worth for a retail trader to pay the Nantex services. Because as you can see, we can get uh, the same information, probably not so fast, but we can get more or less the same uh, just to, to, to place our, our orders. All right, let's see now how flash orders are appearing here to push the, the price up, you can see. At the beginning, uh, anyone could think that it's very difficult to distinguish between fake and real liquidity, fake orders and uh, real orders. But uh, in my opinion, it's easy with a little practice to see which paper or which orders are real and which orders are false. So let's see now. We can, we can see something. Right now, we have seen those flashing orders pushing the price, and probably the price will move up. We can see the absorption and the backfilling. All right, so we have reached to the end of the webinar in case someone needs to, uh, wants to place a question or maybe can contact me at my Twitter account or can reach me at my email, feel free to contact me for any reason. So thank you everyone for attending the webinar and thank you for your time. Thanking also the people of FX Street. Nick is asking how can get uh, the chart or the software. The software is from a company called Bookmap. And you can get a demo just uh, I think applying uh, for it and filling in a form. I have just sent you the the. I have just sent you the the seat uh, from this company. All right. Thank you very much and have a nice evening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.